Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, folks. Michael Zuber, one rental at a time, back with the one and only Mr. Greg Dickerson. And we've got two important things to talk about in this episode. There's a couple of big things that happened this week. Uh, we got the CPI number on Thursday, and we obviously have the elections on Tuesday. So uh, lots going on this week. Greg, uh, where do you want to start? Let's start with all of it, man. You know, uh, elections, politics, I try to stay away from all that because, you know, whatever. But it looks like, obviously, the Republicans have some momentum, probably going to flip the House, maybe the Senate. People are very, number one, inflation. People are, you know, obviously hurting, struggling. That's the number one topic out there on, on voters' minds is inflation uh, and the way that the, you know, they perceive the current administration handling things, which we obviously know uh, has been very uh, <laughs> not great over the last year with, you know, denying inflation and, you know, uh, Biden coming out saying inflation hasn't really increased. You know, it's at eight percent, but it, it it only went up a little bit, you know, yeah, yeah, uh, those yeah. types of things. So, yeah, I think I think Tuesday for me again, I, I'm not I'm not a politician. I don't pretend to be, uh, you know, everybody you do you. Uh, but really what I think Tuesday needs to be and if is we need to have a split government. Uh, as long as the Republicans take one, if not both, uh, I think we get two years of basically gridlock. Uh, and then it all goes down. Then, then we're talking about 2024 election. And, and, you know, that's a whole different can of worms in two years. But it yeah, I think, Biden's I think a one termer. That's definite. You know, no matter who wins the presidency, he's out. I mean, he's not going to get another term. That's that's pretty evident. But, you know, there, there there's some polarization out there right now. But, you know, the economy is number one. Inflation's yep. bad. People's 401ks are down. Their houses are losing mm -hmm. value. Yep. You know, it's it's whenever that happens, it flips. Yeah. So I think Tuesday. Yeah. I mean, I think this is yeah, this is this, you know, Tuesday will be its thing. We'll figure out what's what. And then Thursday, Thursday is another sign about just how bad inflation is. Uh, I don't know if you've seen the expectations, but I'll repeat them for the audience. Expectations for headline CPI is 8 percent. Last month was 8.2. And expectations for core, which I think is the most important, is 6.5. Last month was 6.6. .6. So inflation reading on Thursday, if you know, there's been for two months now, all my Wall Street friends have been hoping for something with a seven on it and they've been left wanting. So, yeah. What do, what do you think happens on Thursday? Yeah. Yeah. I think it's going to come in, you know, equal to or greater than the last one. You know, I, I expect it to pop a little bit higher. You know, who knows how far it could go, but nothing's coming down. We all know it. We all see it. Everything. You know, the only thing that really came down at all was gas for a while there, but that's climbing yep. back up again. Uh, mm -hmm. everything is going up, everything. And sure, you might see some consumer goods come down around the holidays because inventory levels are high, but that's not going to offset everything else. Energy's higher, fuel's higher, rent's higher, food's higher, everything. Yeah, yeah. I mean, what, really what, uh, you know, I've been studying inflation, you know, back since I was in college and got my econ degree. There's a couple of things that I don't think the average person understands. When you look at the basket of goods or what really goes into inflation, at the highest level, you can divide it into two components, stuff or goods and services. And whether you like it or not, goods make up 35% of an inflation calculation and services, right? Services, it, rent is a service, for example, right? How owner's equivalent rent is a service. Wages is a service. Uh, that is 65%. Well, and, and you know, we all know this. You are a income property owner, you know, investment property owner, are you reducing rents in any of your properties or are you raising them? Yeah, raising who, them. Yeah. Yeah. Who who do you know that owns rental property that's not raising rents? You know, yeah. and that was a big there, topic because there, there are some short term Airbnb folks that are lowering daily rents. <laughs> yeah, but you know, that's some of it seasonal. And yeah, you know, yeah. some of it like we talked about as soon as the pandemic was over worldwide, people were going to travel abroad because, you know, that's just how it is. And the ones that are not in the right markets are, you know, they're going to take a hit because, oh, yeah. you know, you could almost put an Airbnb anywhere over the last couple of years and, you know, people would use it. But, exactly. you know, some of that some of that will uh, change as we move forward. But I totally agree. The big thing on rents is, you know, they're looking at year round. They're not looking at seasonal rents when they you know factor in those inflation numbers. And there was some questions about that and Powell kind of had addressed it. And there's been a lot of debate on it in terms of how they measure rents. And, you know, talking about in-place rents, you know, historical versus new. And Powell's like, hey, we're aware that, you know, renewals are coming up and those prices ain't coming down. And that's that's where you're getting the bulk of your inflation. This is the historical stuff. It doesn't matter. It's the stuff that is not being measured yet. 
And that's yeah. the big thing that the Fed's looking at. And some people don't agree with that, some economists. And mm -hmm. the other thing that you as an economist would be interesting to hear your opinion on, I heard a, um, I think it was the labor secretary was being interviewed last week and uh, by Bloomberg. And the Bloomberg commentator tried to pin him because the labor secretary, oh yeah, we're focused on jobs. We're going to you know keep employment strong. And the Bloomberg guy's like, well, wait a minute, we have to get inflation down. And the only way to do that is to destroy demand, which means you're going to lose jobs. So how are you going to bring inflation down while increasing and de while decreasing the unemployment rate? Because the labor mm -hmm. secretary is like, we want to keep the unemployment rate down. He's like, how are you going to get inflation down and the unemployment rate at the same time? And he couldn't, he didn't answer it. Oh well, yeah. It's, it's, th that is, um, those are cross currents that would be very difficult for an economist to really articulate there there's no question i think i think jerome powell's quote at jackson hole is is what he meant pain is coming and also there's a couple of things um you know we were at 3.5 percent unemployment we're now at 3.7 given last month's reading uh still historically low uh we're gonna go we are going to go to five or potentially above five that's millions of people losing their job you kind now, of have to and you know yeah. to, the, to that point the commentator kept pushing on it you know because he the labor sector is like we want to bring it down we want to bring unemployment down he's like how are you going to control inflation and bring unemployment down you know at the same time and see that's the rub that you talked about in terms of a you know you need some uh you know uh what's the word i'm looking for in, in the in the government you know um you need you need a split government you need a split government right. because right. um you know for that reason right now you have the fed doing one thing but you have the gut you have the administration doing another uh, congress you know, is allocating. they're stimulating they're stimulating they want employment down you know unemployment down they want to stimulate and they're... put money out there while the fed's trying to tighten and yeah. control inflation so you got this thing going on right now so you mm -hmm. need to you know you need to bring that back into balance with a little bit of a split government yeah I, I i totally agree and the other thing i think that's very interesting you and i haven't talked about this yet uh, but it, I think it bears witness is I think we I think we're clearly seeing that the Fed, right, the tw I think it's 12 members, maybe it's 13 members of the Fed are in a, in disagreement like uh, never before. Two meetings ago, they all came out in unison. We we all agree to go 75 basis points. I think what we're starting to get to now and we saw in the statement, which came out at 1130 Pacific, 230 Eastern, you saw the Hawks and the Dove creating a statement they were all happy with. And then you had Powell come out. And now I'm willing to bet, I would love to hear your opinion on this. I think Powell is the biggest hawk in the room. Because what Powell basically did is, hey, here's your statement. All of you, Linnea Brainerd and Neil Kaskari and all these other people, you get whatever you want in the statement, but I'm going to come out in front of the press conference. I'm the only one in front of the microphone and I'm going to be a hawk and I'm going to kick the market in the nuts. And I'm going to tell them we're going higher. We're going to be there longer. And that means I think this week there's at least 10 public Fed speeches. And I think we're going to see a big just just fight. The doves and the hawks are going to be just battling it out in the media. What do you think? Yeah, yeah. It's going to be fun to watch, you know, and, and it, a lot of it's going to depend on how CPI comes out. If it comes out hotter than expected, then the dovish Fed members will say, oh, we've peaked, just like they were saying before. But the yeah. Fed has no credibility. They have lost their credibility because they have they they don't have a grip on inflation. To their credit, on a certain level, uh, the federal government is still stimulating. So yeah. you know you, you can't control and, and really affect inflation until that stops. And you know that whole Inflation Reduction Act, you know that they put into place is an inflationary, you know, stimulating yeah. act. And all these other things that are happening and the war is stimulating the war in ukraine because we're, mm -hmm. we have to produce more weapons to send over there and fill our backlog so that's you know pumping into the economy there but um you know yeah until you destroy demand and right now the indications from most economic you know data and indicators and the gdp growth the consumer is still strong resilient not backing yeah. off right now and until that happens until you get consumers to back off and we start to see some negative growth. You're not going to get inflation down. Yeah, really. What when you look at Powell saying pain is coming, really the only thing that he can control is what's called the wealth effect, right? Right. And and basically the wealth effect has this kind of lever uh, in our economy. Basically, where your stocks are going up, your house is going up. You feel wealthier, so you're you're more open to spending. What Powell can do via the interest rate is he can 
jack up the funds rate, which impacts the 10 year, which impacts mortgage rate, which impacts borrowing capital for business, borrowing for, for growth, all of that stuff. And he can cause the negative wealth effect where people get scared, right? Where companies retreat, i.e. Meta laying off 10% of folks on uh, Wednesday, for example, as reported by the Wall Street Journal. That negative wealth effect, uh, and negative that's all he has. And it takes a while for that to ripple through. So he was very clear last Wednesday, I am going higher. We are going to stay there longer. And I am ready to absorb pain. That's That's what I heard him say. Yeah, exactly. And what he understands is coming through the pandemic, a lot of people saved up a lot of money because they weren't traveling. They weren't eating out as often. They weren't spending money. So they saved up money. They received stimulus, investing in stocks, crypto, real estate, everything just boomed. So it takes a while for that to come back down. I mean, interest rates just this, what, three months ago got above 5%. So we're only three months into high interest rates. That takes a while to really affect people. So, you know, I don't think we're going to see the real effects of all of this until we get into mid next year. And yes. that's what a lot of these dovish members are worried about. They're thinking, oh, we need to stop and just kind of let it take effect. And what Powell said, and this is the big thing that not very many people are talking about. And here's the good news of this whole conversation. This is the bullish news. This is what you need to pay the most attention to right here, right now, is Hal said, we're going to do all the damage we can do as fast as we can do. And then we can pivot. Then we yeah. can reverse course and undo any damage or any harm or anything we've done. That is when you go all in because it's going to be off to the races, you know, in bull market. Yeah. And you're going to see that 2018, you know, 2020 pivot. You're going to see that 2018 pivot. You're going to see that 2009 V bottom everywhere. Yeah. Not real estate I, necessarily, but everything else. Yeah. Levered assets, risk assets. Yeah. This stuff that's, yeah, I, I totally agree with you. I don't think enough people are talking about Powell was very clear. And I think it was in the Q and a, he basically said, I have to, I know how to use my tools to stimulate the economy. Right. He said, we I'm the not Fed, worried about going too far because I know how to I fix can, it if we do. Yeah. I got that one, but we do not have tools if this gets entrenched. Right. And it is, it's entrenched and they, they haven't had really any, they haven't made a dent. No. So yeah, I think there's, I think Thursday, no, oh, yeah. Thursday's a big day. Uh, I'm afraid that CPI once again will will surprise to the upside, will exceed expectations, will be more evidence that I I think we have one more 75 basis points coming in December. I think they reduced the first meeting in 2023. If the number comes in low and it has a seven on it, we may get a 50 basis points in December. I really do think it's either 50 or 75 in December. What do you think? Oh, yeah. If it comes in lower, yeah, if you get a seven handle on inflation somehow, uh, to, yeah, I whatever. But if that happens, man, the market's going to be off to the races and yeah. we're going to have some fun. It's going to be interesting because, yeah, they will be talking about backing off at that point. And you've got lower inflation peak narrative coming out. I mean, markets will be. The trend will be clear. Be, yeah, exactly. You're going to see the biggest rally you've seen in a long time. <laughs> yeah. So this is a big week, folks. Big week, big week. Uh, Greg, can you tell I'm excited? Man? <laughs> yes, I can. I, I got that vibration at the end of this. It was. It I've was got fun. some positions on waiting for this to happen. Push the button. Go, 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 go. <laughs> Where can people find you? Yeah, gregdickerson.com. Awesome. Thanks, buddy.